Welcome, welcome everyone. We decided to have it in English today and many thanks for joining uh, this session. Uh, I know that everyone is busy with buying presents and cleaning, baking and stuff. So we really appreciate that you found some time to uh, be with us and we hope not to disappoint you and we hope you will walk away with some practical stuff and activities. Each of us has uh, his own activities and we're gonna be taking turns presenting those activities. When it's Roman's turn, Roman's turn, I will be in the position of the student. So we will be performing the activities together. As, as you've heard, my name is Roman and I've been teaching for 22 years. So I, I have some experience in this field. And this is my ex-student, Michael. Yes, I make my living as a high school English teacher as well, but I've been a high school English teacher for two and a half years, but it's been like 10 years since I started teaching. So yeah, I do have some experience as well, but not as much as him. Okay, so um, yeah, the first activity. So um, yeah, I'll just take this. Um, first of all, my first five activities are based on this sticky tape, which I use in my classes. And uh, so I'll show you five activities that you can uh, do with a sticky tape. This is what I found at home and I had no idea what to use it at home for. So I just brought it to school and I use it in my teaching. Uh, yeah, so the first one, getting to know each other. Uh, first of all, uh, we are going to talk about our names. Um, so I'm going to answer four questions, but I'm not going to tell you what the questions are. You need to guess. You can write the questions uh, in the chat box or on a piece of paper or just, um, yeah, whatever. And then you will tell me what questions uh, I answered. Oh, yeah. So first one, yeah, it is Roman. And uh, I think I'm pretty happy with my name. Um, people call me in different ways like Rome, Romcho, Rome. My, one of my colleagues call me, calls me Romulus and my dad used to call me Romaniak. And I knew I was in trouble when I heard Romaniak. So I didn't like uh, to hear that. And yeah, next question. Mm, I think my mom has, uh, I don't know why, Maybe she thought it was an interesting name. She liked that, but I actually never asked her why she decided uh, to call me like that and why she chose this name. Yeah, so uh, uh, Mike, did you listen? What are the four questions? Uh, and some people are answering. So Yeah, I can see the questions here as well. And from what I can see, I think everybody got it right. So <laughs> the first uh, question was, what is your name? Yeah. Then do you like your name? Who chose the name? True. And what people call it? What do people call you? Or what do they call you? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I, I use this activity usually when I teach the class for the first time. And I want just to get to know each other. I know to uh, just uh, know about the names and stuff. So I use it and we do it in, in groups of three or four. Uh, now we'll do it with Michael. So I hope you can see that. <clears throat> so tell me about your name. Oh, my name is Michael or Michal for that matter. Uh, I think I like the name. My mother was going to call me something else, but I'm happy that my father decided on this one. And have you ever wished to be called a different name? By a different Actually, name? I haven't. No, definitely not. And there are many ways that people call me uh, you were talking about yourself getting into trouble when you were a kid. Whenever I got into trouble, my father called me Michalku, which also, you know, that way he made it sound like I was an idiot or something. Mm -hmm. Whenever he said it, I, I... Ironic way. Yeah, I, I knew he was disappointed in me. And um, it was actually my father who chose my name. My name was going to be Krzysztof. That was the name my mother was going to... Uh, you know, give to me, but my father decided on this one. And 
yeah, I, I think. Yeah, and the questions are basically the same. So this was just a demonstration of what it could look like in the class. Or what you can do, you can do it as a mingle activity. So the students, they have with the name on a sticky tape, they mingle, they talk about their names and they just share. Mm. And this is a nice way how they get to know each yeah. other. And we have a question here. Uh, yes, this, uh, this webinar is in English. We were told that this is actually the first one in English, but that's what we decided to do. Yeah, to do it in English. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second activity, uh, I'm just going to share, and the second activity, um, this is again what I use with new students, uh, and I just want them to know something about me, and then I want to know something about them back, uh, so again, I've got a sticky tape, and I draw pictures, or I write just things about uh, myself, and they ask me questions about that so i give everyone like three minutes and i tell them to draw pictures or write words or even numbers connected with their lives with their hobbies and then they mingle they introduce each other and um, when they see each other they also guess from the pictures so imagine this is what i have and yeah and i have my pictures as well yeah. So I'm not sure if you can, I hope you can see that well. So let me show you my, my piece of paper. I'm not very skillful, as you can tell. Roma, do you have any questions for me based on uh, the picture? Yeah, I can see, I can see a woman that is crossed. Uh -huh. So I guess you don't like women. Well, you might be close. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, that's my non-existent. So what does it mean? That's my non-existent girlfriend, actually. Ah, so you are single at yeah. the moment. Yes. Right. As uh, next picture, there is a face. I don't know if it's a person or animal. Uh, well, uh, it could be anything, but that's my way of drawing dogs. So mm -hmm. this is a dog. So what do you think you that signifies? A dog. Yeah, I have two actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's I R L. So. Uh, Ireland. Yeah, you got um, it right. Doesn't mean that you would love to travel to Ireland. Actually, I would love to travel there or go there again, but I've been there three times. That's a country that I'm really mm -hmm. fond of. Yeah, and there is number 29. So I guess this is the number of girlfriends you have had in your life. You might be close again, but it's actually my age, 29. Oh, 29. Yeah. I'm jealous now. And uh, the last one, I think this is a journal or something that you write. So maybe you love writing some stuff. I like writing as well, but this is actually a book because I take great pleasure in reading. I love reading. I read every single day. So that's what it stands for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's it. Yeah, that's so it. Very quickly, could you guess about my tape? Like something you can figure out or you can guess about my life? Yeah, and you can you can type it in, type it in the chat box. Uh, no, I'm asking you. Ah, oh, you're asking is me. I'm sorry, I got it. That. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, is there anything that we have in common? Yeah, I guess there is Ireland. Yeah, Ireland, USA as well. Yeah, and I I used to work in these two countries for about half a year. And there is New Zealand as well. So have you worked there? No, 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 no. New Zealand is actually on my bucket list. So this is a country I, I would love to visit. And I can see two ladies. So are you like torn between yeah. two ladies at the moment? <laughs> no, the is first the one, the taller one, a little bit taller one is my wife. And the smaller one is uh, my daughter. Yeah, she'll turn for 15 next year. Mm -hmm. Why do you think there is uh, the beer? Because that's what we're going for after the webinar. No, no, no. This is, uh, it symbolizes oh. the, the city. I studied. Yeah, so Pilsen. Yeah, right? uh, I studied at West Bohemian University in Pilsen. And you love beer as well. Uh, yeah. yeah. And there is coffee. And what is this drowned object? Is it a ball? Some kind yeah, of ball? The tennis ball, my favorite free time activity. Why do you think I wrote friends? Uh, I believe it might stand for two things as well. You're a very sociable person. You like people. You have a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. And you like the TV show as well. Am I right? 
Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And so, I was born in Slin. I'm living in Herska Hajisti at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of coffee, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So, True. yeah, that's it. Um, students, they usually enjoy doing this activity, even though they cannot draw, like I cannot, Michael cannot really. So, um, they can still write something, or as I said, even numbers and stuff. Yeah, numbers, symbols, and, whatever. Yeah, I usually play music, students mingle, and they get to know each other. So, this is a nice way. I don't know if you have any comments or. Um, yeah, th there is. We're getting some credit for doing the webinar in English. Thank you. Uh, Somebody sorry. loves the simplicity. Caroline, thank you. Thank you for the comment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we can read it later. So, mm -hmm. the next activity I've got it's also get to know each other. Um, so, I need a sticky tape again. This is the third activity, actually. And you need yours as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is which one? Maybe. Uh, okay. Put it, put it there. <laughs> and um, we are going to think of something that we either love doing or we love talking about. So um, I have an idea mm -hmm. and you have an idea about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I will just show you the way we do it with students. Is this one? Yeah, yeah. Is, is that one? So, um, Mike. Would you please write a letter F here? Okay, I could, but only if you answer one of my questions. So what's your question? Uh, what did you have for breakfast this morning? This morning I was very nervous, so I didn't eat anything. Okay. Yeah, thank you. By the way, if you have some female students, make sure they put a tape somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because some parts Just could a bit be of advice. dangerous. Yeah. So... Uh, could you please write the letter G here? Letter G? G, G as Jim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, but only if you answer my question. So what is your question? Um, uh, when did you start thinking about becoming a teacher? Well, at the age of 20, I guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not before. I might have been 18, but I, I, I had no idea what I was going to do, and teaching was one of the options. So, and yeah. it was at the age of five. Five. So, what letter was it? G. Okay. So, now let's make it faster. Mm -hmm. Could you please write letter I here? Yes, but only if you answer one of my questions. I hope they can see that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, but we'll all right. explain later. Uh, what is your dream country you want to visit? You've been to Ireland, you've yeah. got great love for Ireland, but yeah. is there a country you want to visit? Out of those countries I haven't been to, I would really love to go to Sweden. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So could you please write a letter Y here? <laughs> yeah, but only if you answer my question. Okay, what is the question? What did you have for breakfast? Uh, I had eggs, actually, yeah, and toast. Mm -hmm. A letter Y, right? Oh, yes. Okay. Okay, just think. Uh, uh, could you write letter S here, please? Sure, but only if you answer one of my questions. What's your question? What was the last family activity you were involved in? Um, I think it was yesterday. My We celebrated my mom's name day. Mm -hmm. So we had a small party in her mm -hmm. house. What is her name? Uh, Dagmar. So actually, it's I think it's tomorrow. Oh, okay. When we celebrate. <laughs> so you were, you, were, you were making it up, maybe. Okay. <laughs> And no, 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 that's true. Okay. Uh, so the, the last thing, so could you please write a letter uh, M here? Yeah, we chose short words because we don't want to bore you too much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but only if you answer my question. What is your question? Mm. How many times have you been in Ireland? Three times. Okay. Yeah. okay. And could you write letter H? It's the last only one. If you answer one of my questions. So what's your question? What is your last question? What is your favorite alcoholic drink? Uh, gin and tonic. Okay, but it's expensive, so I prefer drinking yeah. beer. So age is yours. Yeah. So now I've got fish, and he's got gym. And what I do with students, I give them like one minute each, and they talk about what they've written. So I would talk about fishing. <laughs> uh, yeah, we will answer that. I, I would talk about fishing. I, I used to go fishing when I was a little boy with my grandparents. I still go fishing, and I love eating fish and stuff. So I would talk about it for a minute and Mike can ask me questions. When I finish talking about this topic, 
uh, Mike is going to talk about gym. So can you tell me a couple of things about you and gym? Sure. I joined the gym at age of 16. And since then, I've been going there uh, like three times a week. But uh, I'm sometimes very busy to go there. So now it turned into a hobby that is just vocational. But I like it. Uh, okay. We have some questions here or uh, quite a few questions are about uh, the level that we are or the level of students that we teach. Yes, this is for more, let's say, advanced students, high school students. Uh, Roman teaches at Gimple. I teach at a secondary school as well. So this is for more uh, advanced students. But I don't think so. I use it with B1 students. Yeah, I would say B1 students. Because they can think of simple questions. It, 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 I think these are easily adopted to lower levels as well. So uh, it comes down to what do you mean by advanced student? Yeah, B1. Yeah, I would say this is mm -hmm. good for B1 as well. Even maybe A2 plus. Yeah. And at the end of the presentation, we can have a discussion about how to modify these activities in a way that will make them, let's say, simpler and easier for mm -hmm. uh, some of those students. Yeah, again, uh, as I said before, this is also a uh, get to know each other activity. So we are just two, so that's why we are taking turns. But in a big class, uh, I just tell students that one person or one student writes just one letter. So they have to, after one letter, they have to go and ask someone else to write a second letter, etc. And I usually tell them your words should be, uh, should have more than four letters so to talk to at least four different students so this is how it works mm -hmm. okay yeah. so and yeah uh, if you do have any questions about this activity also we can answer at the end of the session mm -hmm. yeah uh good next one okay, would you yeah, uh, the questions so i'll just share it so this is the one we have done and the next one, uh, I just tell students to write any two questions um, on, on that sticky tape and mingle and uh, find out about the others. So I tell them, like, write something interesting, something you want to know about the others. So uh, for me, there is, would you still teach if you were super rich? Yeah, you can answer this question in the uh, chat box if you want to. And what are your fears? So these two questions, um, I would just use mingle, talk to others, and find out about them. And I, I yeah. love the I love the first question, by the way. So if you write it down, I will be very very happy to see your answer. Yeah, so what about you, by the way? Would you? Do yeah, you yeah, uh, so part time, definitely part time. Part time. Yeah. yeah. So two or three days a week, and only uh, my favorite classes. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, I, I would teach you like four or six classes a week. I mm -hmm. get a lot of enjoyment out of teaching, but I would definitely teach less. Where, when I want to practice certain grammar, like the first one is the second conditional, I tell students, okay, one question must be second conditional. And I give them an example like this one, what would you do if something? And the second can be any question or if you teach, I don't know, uh, comparatives or superlatives, just tell them, okay, write a question with a superlative form. What is the best uh, alcoholic drink for you or anything with that? So I use it either to practice grammar and I tell them what they have to write or just any questions they want to find out about the others. And it works. So what are your questions? I was just going through the, the answers. They were great. A lot of passionate The mingle activity. Uh, okay. What would you do if you were the only person on the planet? Actually, I've never thought of this. Never, ever. Uh, I would be too scared. I would just look for other people, even though I knew I, I was the only one. I would still keep looking for them. The second question, uh, what's your favorite... favorite? Family Christmas activity. <laughs> Eating carp and potato salad. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, being with my family. Mm -hmm. And seeing my daughter unwrapping presents. That's it. Yeah, and nice. then we would go and talk to other people. Yeah, so again, this 
ticket tape would work in this way. And, and the last activity, activity number five, famous people. Okay, I'll just stop sharing. Yeah, so we are going to write down a name of a famous person. And we have no idea what the other person is writing. So please write down one mm -hmm. famous person. And then we are sharing also the marker. So don't have a look at that. Oh, true. I don't know how to spell her name. How do we spell his name? I do. So maybe it's, and we have no idea what we have. So uh, I hope you can see that. We don't. <laughs> yeah, I cannot see that. Okay. And we are going to ask each other to find out about ourselves, who we are, and the, the person who first uh, discovers uh, the name is the winner. Mm -hmm. So we can start. Am I a woman? Yes, you are. Am I, uh, am I alive? No. Okay. Am I alive? Uh, yes, you are. Sorry about the spelling. I just no idea. Um, am I a man? Yes. So I'm a dead man. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, uh, for am I in my fifties? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Um, did I live in the last century? Um, like the also, 20th, also, yes, also. My God! So, with someone from the history, your question. Uh, uh, am I a sportswoman? Am I an athlete? No, like you are slim, but I don't think you are a very sporty person. You are not an athlete. Um, was I a famous politician? No. Was uh, am I a singer? You are not. Mm -hmm. But you might be able to sing, I don't know. Do, do young people like me? Uh, no, just one question. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, was I Czech? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you okay. basically, you know, to cut it short, I'll give you a hint. You basically answered the question, but you don't know. You said, oh my God, and you are, you are uh -huh. Karel Gott. Okay, yeah. so I won. <laughs> We, we did not plan this beforehand, you know, just for the record, we did not plan this. And do you know who you are? No. So can I take a look? No, 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 no. Uh, I think if if you read some news, uh, the gossip news you have there, you married Prince Harry. Oh, so I'm Megan. Megan, yeah. yeah. And I don't know how to spell that. Yeah, so I won. Thank you very much for that. And uh, I do it in a group of like four or five. They just write the names of famous people uh, to each other and they just ask questions or you can just put it on the back. They mingle and they can ask one question to each person and then walk away and find out about them. So that's it. Okay. So that's all from me now uh, with the sticky tape. Now it's Mike's turn. And then I've got one more activity with dice. Okay, so much for part one. Okay, I hope you can see it well. <clears throat> so uh, my presentation is about how to make students talk, how to get them talking. And uh, I think it might come across as an activity for, let's say more advanced students. But then later I will show you some ways in which you can modify the activity in a way that it's easier. So uh, my presentation is divided into two parts in each of which uh, I'm going to show you one activity. And um, what I want you to take away is not just the activities themselves, but also some, let's say, principles, principles that underlie the activities. Uh, and speaking of those principles, I'm going to uh, I'm going to share with you. I don't think I discovered America, so to speak, but uh, you know, chances are you've been implementing all these techniques for ages. But still, I would love to show you what I do when my students just won't cooperate. So let me let me out, outline uh, one situation. 
how do you get your students talking if you are if they are bored, tired, or even disgusted? I believe we've all been there. You know, you've been there before. Sometimes your students just want to talk to you. They're tired, bored, disgusted. They're basically giving you a finger, a metaphorical one, of course. So what I do here is that I put them in charge of the conversation. That's what I do. And now I would like to show you an activity through which I put this principle into practice. The activity is called mandatory words. That's what I called it. And it is a no prep activity. It is an activity you need, uh, you, you don't need to prepare for at all. The only thing that you need is a set of conversation questions like these, for example, just questions. And uh, there are some instructions here on how to <clears throat> set it up. So let me read them out loud. So what you do is that you provide them with uh, questions and then you call on some of your students and uh, you get them to uh, give you a random English word. Uh, the first word that comes to their mind. Then you have your students uh, discuss the questions and they will be discussing or answering the questions until they have used all those words. I'm not sure if uh, that's clear right now. When I just read the instructions first, it's not always that clear, but let me show you some examples of uh, how it works. So this is what it might look like. You call on four students. Each of them gives you a random English word, the first word that comes to their mind. So let's say that you call on Jirka. Jirka gives you a pig. Then you call on Anjka. She gives you a school. Then someone says a peer. Someone says a computer. So you have these four words that you write on the board. And then they draw a question, a random question. So the question here is, uh, when was the last time you hung out with your best friend? And then they get into a discussion and the person who was asked the question needs to keep answering until he or she has used all these words. So let me show you again what it might look like. One day I was playing a computer game when my best friend gave me a call. We didn't have to go to school the following day, so we decided to go to a bar. We had a beer, then another, then another. We got really drunk. When I got home, I was so hungry that I ate everything I could get my hands on. I felt like a pig. So this is a potential answer to the question and all the words have been used as you can see. Let me show you another example. If you do it for the first time, they give you some words that are, let's say normal, but when they do it for the second time, they know what they're getting into. So they have a tendency to, uh, to come up with, let's say more interesting words because they want to make it challenging for the others or they want to make it more fun and funny. So here, as you can see, the first two words are kind of normal, butter and window, but then there is always this student who wants to make it uh, more difficult and challenging for the others or is someone who wants to show off for the others. So they give you a word like inconspicuous. Uh, what is it, by the way? What is inconspicuous? I have no idea. You have to explain that. Yeah. Teacher. If you keep a low profile, you are inconspicuous. You're trying to make yourself inconspicuous. Nena padni in check. Okay, so that's the challenging word. And then there is always someone, always at least one person who wants to spice things up. So they give you a word like this one, lover. I've seen more spicy words, but I chose this one for the purposes of this presentation. Okay, so we have these four words and then a random question what does your morning routine look like? And they need to use all these words. So let me show you an example of what I've seen. So this is uh, the answer. When I wake up, I usually look out of the window and get some fresh air. Then I have a slice of bread with butter. My lover is still asleep. Since I don't like the way I look in the morning, I try to make myself inconspicuous so that he doesn't see me. So this is what uh, it can look like. Uh, what I do with my students, I just give them three words because I think like four words, it is yeah. challenging. But if they're able to use three, maybe later on they will be able to use even four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's one of the ways in which you can modify the activity. 
depending on your students on their uh, on their level. Yeah, that's what you can do. I would like to give it a shot. So please, everybody, could you please uh, use the chat box and type in the first English word that comes to your mind? So could you please open the chat box here? Pineapple. Okay, so we have pineapple. Roman, you can write them down. Uh, Christmas. Yeah. Mug. Pineapple. Christmas. And mug. Mug. And no box gingerbread. Let's try gingerbread. Gingerbread. Okay, so what are the words? So the first one was pineapple, pineapple. Christmas, mug, <laughs> gingerbread. Inconvenient. Yeah, yeah, they've got so many ideas, but we need only four at home. Okay. So we have these four words. And now let me just, uh, and my question is. Can I pick the question? Okay. Question. Oh, oh, you want to write it? Take a question. And you can make it short. All right. Uh, what was your favorite childhood memory? Uh -huh. What was your favorite childhood memory? Okay. Do no. you want them to write yes. out the answer? Yes, that's what I would love them to do. So please, guys, could you try to down the answer in which you will use all these words, pineapple, Christmas, mug, and gingerbread. So this is the question, what was your favorite childhood memory? So let's open the chat box and let's see what they can come up with. I can give you, we have a lot of words here. Yeah, so please, I'll give you like one minute and you can think about your answer yeah, as well. Um, and then I also wanted to ask you, do you use it as a writing activity as well? Uh, I've never done it before actually, but sounds like a good idea. Yeah, because they have more time to think, mm -hmm. they're going to write and they practice spelling as well, so. Yeah, yeah, true. Again, another way in which it could be modified. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Uh, I will show you some other modifications later on. So no yeah, one, no answers, yet. no answers yet. It's challenging. It is difficult. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I've been told many times before that uh, it is quite challenging for everybody, even for some teachers. So w w any ideas on any suggestions on how it could be simplified? Roman, what do you think? Yeah, just uh, what I would do or when I do this activity, I use the word by myself mm -hmm. according ah. to the level yeah we have, we have some something. answers could you please read them out i remember when my mom drank coffee from a big mug uh and i lost it mm -hmm. the day before christmas me and my brother were eating gingerbread drinking pineapple juice and watching tv congratulations christina, christina thank you christina, that's great yeah and Another there's one. ivana as well mm -hmm. uh, when i was a child we only bought pineapple for christmas <laughs> <laughs> it was very special. On Christmas morning, we would have gingerbread. I can Yeah. I have a mic. Yeah. Uh, on Christmas morning, we would have gingerbread tea in our special mugs while watching Christmas stories on Perfect. TV. Thank you, Ivana. Great. Can we read one more? Yeah, maybe the last one. The last one? No, this one. This one. Sure. My favorite memory happened during Christmas while I was drinking hot pineapple juice from my mug. I reached for a gingerbread and there was none. Oh, this is a very sad story. Yeah. So I hope this year there'll be some gingerbread. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank and, you. And uh, can we try? I'll pick another question and okay. you will answer True. so you can show them how to do it. Wow. Uh, yeah, this is very challenging. No, you would just answer. Okay. Uh, which countries do you hope to visit in the future and use all the words? Okay, I will be able to travel to Scandinavia. Uh, I'm not sure if they sell if they sell pineapples in Scandinavia because that's my favorite fruit. I would definitely love to see, uh, let's see, Sweden uh, during Christmas because I believe it uh, it must be beautiful. Uh, whenever I travel, 
I like to buy a souvenir. So I guess I would buy a mug and, um, you know, getting back to Christmas, I believe there would be a lot of delicious gingerbread in Scandinavia, in Sweden. So yeah, that, that would be, be my answer. Yeah, yeah, you, you did pretty well. No, it, it was it was actually very far from being as good as the the answer. Yeah, yeah. In the chat box, your yours were much better because we are more nervous than they are. So yeah, true. For us, it's more challenging. Okay, uh, I was going to show you some other ways to modify the uh, the activity. Uh, where is it? Here. Just some tips. You can do it in groups as well. And what I do is that I divide my students into pairs or small groups, and then they actually compete. They, uh, let's say one group comes up with words for uh, the other group. Uh, they want to make it challenging for each other. So they come up with crazy words, bizarre words, and then they need to do this within the groups and whoever does it first wins. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what I do as well. And you can also turn it into a competition and I'll show it to you here. Uh, again, you divide your students into pairs. So you have student A, a student B. And what you do is that you give them a question, uh, questions, questions related to a topic that you're currently dealing with. In this case, it is family or family and relationships. And uh, each student gets a list of words and uh, they need to be, they have to be discussing the questions and they need to use all the words they have on their list. And whoever does it first wins. You know, whenever they are able to use one of those words, they tick it off. And when they have used all of them, they win. And can they use just one or two for each question? Yeah, oh, sure, that's so all of them. Get it. So if I use all of them, I win. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. You can, uh, you, you can adjust the rules actually. You can do it in the way that you suggested as well. They can only use, oh, actually if they used one word for one question, it would be clear who was the winner. So they can they can use all the words at once mm -hmm. if they can. Maybe you can set up a time limit for each question, like 30 seconds. And uh, if they can use it in or within 30 seconds, they can tick it off. So that would be a nice way to modify it as well. Okay, uh, and that's it from me. Uh, and you will continue later. Yeah, so now we can do your- Yeah, your so thing. can I have my presentation sure. there, please? Yeah, so uh, my DICE activity, very simple. So for this activity, I need uh, 11 topics any topics you want them to practice in like before maturita exam you can have two maturita topics divided into 11 subtopics for example uh food restaurants ways of cooking anything like that it's up to you what you want to practice you need uh two dice and uh and you you are going to use pairs to play with. So uh, I've got two dice, I've got those topics. I'm going to roll my dice and I'm going to choose uh, a topic for my partner. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. So topic number 11. Mm -hmm. So I want you to speak for 30 seconds about interesting stuff about your family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so when I was a kid, uh, we used to go to Croatia every year, I would say, or I, I think we were there like seven years straight, or uh, not seven years straight, like uh, seven years back in to a back. row. Yeah, in a row. And uh, the only thing we used to do was lie on the beach, and it was actually very boring, but my parents were very tired, so they, you know, felt that they need to three legs and take a rest. So, did you go to the same place? Uh, no, no, no. We were in more places actually yeah mm -hmm. half a minute's over good so now you can roll the dice to choose a topic for me okay. that's 10 so parties. parties okay 30 seconds about parties yeah i think 
uh, yeah, I hope I'll be able to say in 30 seconds. I used to party a lot when I was at university in Pilsen because in Pilsen there are so many bars and great places to hang out with friends. So I used to party a lot. Then I got married and I started partying less. I still do party with uh, my friends, but it, it's not mm -hmm. as often as I used to. Mm -hmm. So, but I still love it. Yeah. And I think it's very important to socialize. Mm -hmm. So it's over. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. So your wife put a stop to your parties. No, actually, I decided to devote my time to my family. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, so these are the topics. Again, you choose whatever topics you want. And uh, we are going to practice grammar now. So I've got these question words. When, who, why, where, how, how often, how much, how many, which, what, and yes, no question. So uh, now, Mike, you can, start, you can draw the dice. Okay. Number nine. Number nine. So the topic teachers. teachers. And then mm -hmm. one more. Yeah, then one more because and yeah. it is four. Number four, which is why. So you have to ask me a question. Mm -hmm. Teachers and why. Mm -hmm. Anything connected with teachers mm -hmm. and 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 why. So mm -hmm. I'm ready to answer your question. Was there a teacher you didn't like? Why? If yeah. so, why? Um, at the secondary school, yeah, there were loads of them. And the only, th uh, the only thing I didn't like about them that sometimes um, they were just presenting the topic and we didn't do any activities mm -hmm. at all. So we just spent 45 minutes writing stuff. And yeah. then at home, we had to memorize that, mm -hmm. write, take a test and... And, and then I forgot it. So mm. I just didn't like the way they presented mm. the topic. So and was there a teacher that was like different? Uh, yeah, a, a couple of them, but not not, not many. Not many. I, I think the situation changed. Mm -hmm. So now um, I'll do the same. So number seven, mm. six, and one: animals and pets. And number five, mm -hmm. where? Animals and pets and where? So I need to come up with a question for you mm -hmm. with that. So you said you have a dog, actually two dogs. Two dogs, two chihuahuas, chihuahuas. actually. Yeah. So where do you keep them? Inside, mm -hmm. outside, and, and, and why? Actually, uh, we keep them inside. If they were outside, they would freeze to death. So we keep them inside and uh, they are used to uh, lazing around, lying on the couch, they actually mm -hmm. sleep in our beds. Um, so we definitely keep them inside. We take them for a walk. Yeah, I've got one more question. Mm -hmm. Where an animals? Where did you get them? Where did you buy them? I don't remember. It was uh, it was a town I had never heard of before, and I forgot the name of the town. So I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, maybe this is not so important. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, and this is how the activity works. They just students in pairs take turns, ask each other questions, practice grammar at the same time, and they usually have fun while doing this activity. Yeah, I've tried this one uh, many times, and it always worked. And what I would like to say is that whenever you incorporate something new, they always like it, and it always seems to work and take the activity a little bit further. Mm -hmm. However, however simple it might be. So if you introduce the dice. It just makes it work better for some reason. They just, you know, like the idea of doing something they're not used to doing. Yeah, like at school, like choosing. rolling dice. Yeah. 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 So that's something I have very good experience with as well. But sometimes the dice they end up on the floor. Yeah. To pick them and stuff. Very, very often actually. Yeah. And you you also put yourself at the risk of losing the dice. So you should always make sure that you have some spare dice as well because they might lose them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we are going to have another seminar, I think, in January. Mm -hmm. And I've got three more activities you can do with DICE. Uh, so you're yeah. welcome to join yeah. the next one. But, but today I don't have any more time. So it, it's your turn now. Mm -hmm. Thank sure. you. Okay, I hope everyone can see it. Uh, so in the first part of my presentation, I raised the question of what to do when your students are uh, tired, disgusted. Uh, board 
And now the question is, what should we do with our students if they are too shy and introverted or maybe scared of you, which is what happens to you, right? Sometimes, yeah. Okay, so the, the answer or the principle that I always try to apply here is this one. Make the conversation about yourself or put yourself out of there. Get the skuji uh, natr. Yeah. So here there is one activity that I like to use in my introductory classes. In the first classes, when I want to get to know my students, when I teach them for the first time, and it is called a personal picture. And it might be similar to what Roman showed you at the very beginning, but it is quite different. So what you need is uh, a picture of your belongings. You put together a lot of stuff, your personal things, your personal belongings that... Maybe not too personal. <laughs> Maybe not too personal. Yes. yes. Uh, but some things that characterize you, that are typical of you, some things that you like. And then what you do is that you put it up and you have your students ask you questions based on the picture. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, you know they ask you questions, and you can tell them some personal stories uh, connected to the things in the picture. And what you can also do is that uh, you connect the acti activity with a grammar topic that you want to review. And then after you've done this, you can make them talk about themselves. Themselves, from my experience, students love to ask their teachers about their personal stuff, and the idea is that it breaks the eyes and later on they will feel more comfortable talking about themselves. Uh, as I said, you can connect it with uh, a grammar topic. So these are WH words and it might be suitable for first year students because this is you know, quite simple. And this is the picture, picture of my belongings. So what I do here is that I uh, I have two activities. I get them to perform two different things, two different activities. The first one, they talk to each other. They're supposed to talk to their partners about what they can see. And based on that, they prepare questions for me. And they should actually uh, use WH words in their questions. Uh, I let them do it. And then I have them ask me questions based on the picture. From what you can see, are there any questions that come to your mind right now? From, mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to ask me about? Uh, I just want to ask you, there's the potato peeler. Mm -hmm. Do you really enjoy peeling potatoes? Because when I cook, this is the job that I absolutely hate. And I always tell my daughter to help me out. So what about that? I wish I, wish I liked peeling potatoes. I love potatoes, especially roast potatoes, but peeling them... No, 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 that's not something I like, but I put it in here because I love cooking in general. That's one of my greatest hobbies. So that's uh, that's what it signifies, actually. Mm -hmm. I have one more question. I can mm -hmm. see the, the book, Niemczyna pro samouki, so self-study German book. Uh, do you still learn German or was it from the secondary school that you enjoyed learning German? Or did you stop or do you still... Mm -hmm. A, a great question. I've been studying German for like 10 years on and off. And actually now I'm taking a break, unfortunately, mm -hmm. because I'm busy doing a lot of other things. But in like one and a half months, I'm planning on getting started on my German again. And this is one of my favorite textbooks. Last question. Who mm -hmm. do you cook for? There's the frying pan. So who do you cook for? Usually, usually for myself. Kind of selfish, I know, but I usually cook for myself, but sometimes for other people as well, but usually for myself. Okay, thank you. Uh, I hope you can see the lines. So what do you guys think that the lines might signify? Let's take a look at it. You can type it in there. Someone is saying, I can see any presentation. Yes, 
and it is Peter. Yet mm -hmm. that's the that's the straight answer, the correct answer. The lines signify the number of questions in which your students are supposed to use these words. So who only one, uh, how only one as well, and yeah, when, twice, what, oh, yeah. three times. So this is this is how it works. Yeah, what I do. Yeah, yep. what I do with my students. Uh, I show them the picture about myself, the question words, again, uh, the point like how many times they need to ask me. Uh, and then I said like, okay, you have got three minutes. And if you manage to ask me all the questions, you win. If you cannot, I win. Mm -hmm. And they try really hard to ask me questions. And I just cross, cross the questions they ask me. And yeah, yeah, I just turn it into a game or competition. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thank you. Uh, these are some questions, some of the questions I've been asked before. So who do you play basketball with? How often do you work out? You can see them. I don't have to read them out loud. And what I also like to do, if you have some students who are, let's say, good, ambitious, a little bit more advanced, you can uh, use some of your answers like this, and you can highlight some useful phrases that you think might be useful. Uh, you can just throw them in there and then you can have your students use the phrases in their answers or you can uh, put them on a test or whatever. You can uh, use those phrases in some way. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you do it, but uh, when I do this activity with my students, I tell them like, uh, as your homework, you have to do the same, just take a picture and then um, they take a picture mm -hmm. and in the next class, they share it with other students in groups and they introduce themselves to each other sure they talk about that what about what do you do with those students who are let's say introverted shy who don't feel comfortable speaking in front of a lot of other people how do you go about it um so i usually tell them to work in pairs mm -hmm. someone they know they trust well so yeah three I was introverted, I just put in smaller groups. So sometimes I join the group and help them. Yeah. So just a few more things. This is what I uh, always do as well. Is there anything you have in common with your teacher? Discuss it with your partner. As I said before, if you put yourself out there, if you talk about yourself, if you make fun of yourself, it is very likely that they will feel much more comfortable talking about themselves. So. This is, this is what you can do. Make it about yourself. Uh, we're not going to play a game now, but that's what I do with my students. Uh, there is this activity that I believe needs no introduction. Find someone who, uh, this is what you can do as well. You can take the information from your presentation, from your picture, and you can make it or turn it into this game. Uh, I guess you know the game. It works the way that they just, you know, these questions so this is based on your picture yes yeah, that's based that's on yeah yeah that, that, that's that's based on the picture they're walking around the classroom asking each other questions uh whenever there is uh something that holds true for someone they ask them a follow-up question and then they can have a discussion so this is what you can do as well okay uh any other it's comments cool because you're yeah. going to yeah sure. check the chat okay So we are, I think we are done with the activities, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the minute is over. So now uh, we can have a discussion if you want to. If you want, you can unmute yourselves and you can ask us questions. If you want, you can do it in check. Because I think there, are, there have been a lot of questions, but we are not able to answer them. There were some suggestions as well, mm -hmm. but we are too busy with presenting the activity. So now if you want to ask anything. It would be great whether it be in the chat box or you can just unmute yourselves and you can ask us and you can do it in check if you want to. Like any comment if, if you found some anything useful or, or not. Or any suggestions on how to improve the activities because we like to learn as well, right? We wanna hear your tips, your suggestions. What games do you play? What a general, question right uh do you mean like games connected to these activities or games in general what was the question what kind of games do we play any ideas 
Yeah, games in the class. I think it is a general question. Any any ideas? What do you like to do? Like what kind of games? Chrono games? Or... Yeah, it is a general question. Yeah, you mentioned Tremor. There is one game that just came to mind that I like a lot. What I do is that I uh, put together a list of 10 sentences in each of which there is a grammar error, a grammar mistake. I put it on the screen and I divide my class into two groups and they compete, you know. Uh, and uh, one group picks a sentence for the other group uh, and they need to find, they need to identify the mistake uh, if they're able to do it, they get some points. If they if they fail, you know the points are taken away from them. By the way, this is called uh, grammar error uh, correction, something like this. And you can find it on teachthis.com, which is a great website. So there are some good ideas, uh, uh, you know, re re regarding games that you can play in your uh, in your classes. I cannot concentrate on two things at the same time. So I'm answering your question and reading the comments as well. <laughs> yeah, we want to thank you a lot uh, for thanking us. So the comments are great. Thanks a lot. Okay, I'm looking for more questions. Somebody likes your sticky tape, Lenka. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's very fond of his, of his tape. Oh, so give it to my colleagues as, as a Christmas present every year. <laughs> Do you? I'm, yeah, I make them use it, so. Yeah. Okay. I, could you write down the game page yet through? It is not, there are not just games, but a lot of other great activities as well. Some of them are free of charge. <clears throat> uh, the most of them are actually uh, <clears throat> activities that you need to pay for, but some of them are free of charge and they're amazing as well. So yeah. teach this. Uh -huh. um, yeah, uh, there is somebody suggesting uh, giving them a choice of answers. I like red or white wine and students, they guess. Uh -huh. This one I need to remember. I love uh -huh. dogs or cats yeah. and students, they guess. Yeah. There's Somebody saying mm -hmm. that the students, Check, right? mm -hmm. yeah, students don't want to communicate. I think with these tips, they they usually want to, or if it's in a game or just a mingle activity, they can encourage each other and they can speak more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I like the idea of creating their own questions. Actually, we have one more webinar, and that's where I tackle these two issues again, like. What do you do with your students if they're uh, if they're uh, either tired or if they're too shy? And I have some other tips for some other activities, so I will present them as I'm going to present them as well. Uh, yeah, but I can I can understand it must be very difficult if you have a troop of like twenty four students. That's what you don't know. You don't know. Throw down here. Yeah. Any tips? Have you ever? taught a class like that, that big? 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were in my seminar and there were 24 of you. There were 24 of us. Yeah. I can't remember. I was in the first row. Uh-huh. Yeah. And there were 23 others. Mm -hmm. So I think what do you just divide them into yeah. groups and yeah and focus on group activities and much usually more. Usually there is one strong student in each group and I tell them okay you are responsible for the group working mm -hmm. well. Uh, and, yeah. and the students, they, they usually, like, they make sure that the group is working well. So just divide them into more groups and make sure that talking. Yeah, you, you put a good student in charge and they, they are usually happy to help the others. Yeah. Uh, this is a question for you. So what do you do when I speak to the Czech language and the students are still in the Czech language? I have taught for a few years. <laughs> and th this is like your topic. I just tell uh, during the first lesson, I tell them this is the rule. I'm going to speak English to you, and you are going to speak English back to me, and I'm not going to accept any check. And if I tell them on the first lesson, they they accept that, and they never try to speak Czech to me. So. He's very strict with his students. 
and whenever there is someone who won't speak English, who keeps speaking Czech, you just give them a five, right? No, I just first of all, I'm like, please do not. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to give them fives because they... But is that something that you used to do in the past? Like you just give them fives if they spoke Czech? Yeah, but it's not necessary to do it now. Yeah. So the students are getting better and better. There is mm -hmm. no one who like keeps speaking Czech, you know? No, no, they usually, if you tell them that you really insist mm -hmm. on, on that, they wouldn't try. Yeah, the reason might be that you teach at Kimple, where there are usually yeah. very good students. So, mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's it. So uh, you have got our email addresses. So if you need to send us an email, ask something, ask something. So please feel free. Yeah, yeah. as you can tell, we uh, we love uh, discussing these these issues, these these things. So we'll be very happy to answer and yeah, feel free to some, reach out. Some doesn't, work. doesn't work. It, at least it works for me. So yeah, but I understand that different schools mm -hmm. and different students, different experience. They yeah. might have had some other teachers in the past, mm -hmm. you know, who who didn't make them speak English at all. So it yeah. might be complicated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I think that's it. Thank you. Yeah. See you enjoy next time. Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy Christmas. Uh, and thank you for coming here, for being with us here at this time before Christmas. And we will be very happy if you join us uh, at the end of January. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm not sure about the day right now, but I believe it is scheduled for the very last day of January. Or something, maybe, yeah. Yeah, might be. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. -bye.